Hey, buddy. Hey, hey. Proverbs 18, 24 states, a man that has friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Hello and welcome to From Sickness to Health. I'm Rico Hill, your host, and this is Sickness, my... What are we exactly? We're friends. <laughs> really? I mean, you're all about the whole sick thing, and I'm more about health, and we don't agree on anything, so... Well, that's because you're... How do I say this gently? Extreme. <laughs> really? Give me one example. Okay, I'll give you one example. All right. Let's take your definition of health. Okay. You think people should be healthy every single day, that they should never get sick. And you know, people like some sympathy when they're sick. For instance, oh baby, how you doing? Do you feel okay? People love that stuff. Then let's talk about sick days. People love sick days. All right, fine, fine, fine. But, but here's the thing. You're my friend, right? That's right. Okay. So as my friend, it wouldn't bother you if I had aching joints, having sleepless nights because of migraines. What if, what if I had to fork out thousands of dollars for expensive rehabilitation and all this, or a heart attack? It wouldn't bother you if I, oh, how about deforming, crippling arthritis? I'm totally fine with it. Wow. In today's program, we're gonna identify real friends versus those that just hang around like friends, but they're really not. Hey, I can hear you right over here. I can hear you talking about me. Come on. Roll it. Rico. Oh, Rico, come back here. Hey, get back over here. Hey, we're friends and you should identify that. Have you ever had a pain in your neck or somewhere else on your body that just wouldn't go away? Or better yet, have you ever had something that just hung around and you embraced it like a friend or family member? You know, we're talking about arthritis today. And you know, sometimes people embrace their pain like it's a friend or a family member. Now, we wouldn't do that if someone robbed our house and we, we wouldn't say, you know, my robber. So today we want to separate what's a friend and what's an enemy and who we should be embracing. Today we have joining us our good friend, and he is a friend, Dr. Jim Saeed, who is a board certified chiropractor and a naturopathic doctor. And as I always say, He's on the forefront of educating people about good health. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we're really happy to have you with us because we're talking about a subject that people need to understand today. Now, we find that millions of Americans, Doc, millions of them are affected by this lifestyle disease, certainly in the African-American community. Sadly. But what's really sort of strikes me is that this particular lifestyle disease has become affectionately known as author mm. or uncle author. Mm -hmm. So in other words, it's being embraced as if it were a family member. But we want to really show that this is no friend and it's no family member, right? Absolutely. But before we do that, let's allow our, well, so-called friend sickness of this program to get his point in before we get into the discussion. Let's see what he has to say. Hey, Rico. Since we're talking about friendship, one of my good friends, he's in town today. You may know him, Arthur. You know, a lot of people call him Arthur Ritus. Arthur Ritus, get it? 60 million Americans suffer from this doctor-diagnosed disease. That's nearly one in five. Do the math. I just did. <laughs> anyway, two-thirds of those are under the age of 65, so it's not just an old folk disease. You know what I mean? Let's take this lady over here, for example. 
Now, as you can see, she's got a lot of blue areas. That's my friend Arthur at work. Let's just see, lady, does that hurt? Ah! Well, you can see what a real friendship looks like. We may not have it, but Arthur and I do. Back to you, Rico. Whoa. Wow. Poor lady, right? Absolutely. Whoa. Well, Doc, what do you have to say about this issue of Uncle Arthur? Well, I feel badly for the family member, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, because... And it's a huge issue. It affects so many, and we see that there are over 100 types of arthritis. How about this? There's some common ones, over 100, but there are some common ones, right? Uh, osteoarthritis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, you've got infectious arthritis, and there's a fourth one. What's that fourth one? Rheumatoid. Juvenile rheumatoid? You mean this is affecting children? Mm -hmm. Talk to us about these different, these common ones. The biggest issue with arthritis is very straightforward. It means inflammation of a joint. Mm -hmm. Whether it's acute, in other words, it's hurting from some kind of an injury, that's an arthritis. From an infection can be an arthritis. Or in the case of rheumatoid or juvenile onset, it can be a connective tissue disease, that is, the body's attacking the joint itself. The immune system has gone awry. It's gone haywire and is seeing its own tissues as foreign and it wants to get rid of them. All these lead to inflammation of the joint. The biggest issue most people suffer with is chronic arthritis. Chronic arthritis. Osteoarthritis, it's also called. And this is a condition that really has two drivers. One is biomechanics of the body, posture, and how we use the body. And the other has to do with what we eat, our style of living, and also how we exercise and stretch and keep movement and flexibility of the body. And I'll give you an example. This is something I see literally every day in practice. Okay. Bad posture. People I sit up. <laughs> Go ahead. People who chronically slouch. Yeah. The classic couch potato or someone sitting over a computer desk or over a counter all day where the head is forward and the back is slunched and that's how they spend hours and hours a day. The problem with that is the effect it has on the body. I'll give you an example. In a slouched position, the low back goes in reverse. It's designed to go forward. Slouching has it come backward. Mm. Then what it does is it causes the mid back to round and then the shoulders start wrenching forward. Then the neck has to come up to be able to keep the eyes level to the horizon. Mm -hmm. That's how we're designed. At the same time, the back of the thighs, the hamstrings, tighten. So do the calves. So people can't touch their toes easily, for example. Mm -hmm. What that does is it causes the whole spine to come forward, and now the muscles have to splint or tighten so you don't collapse forward. At the same time, the feet literally start to duck. They out lay outwards, like mm -hmm. we start duck walking. Yeah. And then the hips start to tighten behind the hips, called the external rotators, the hips, muscles, muscles that turn the hips out. And it perpetuates itself. Then what happens is it causes the brain to compress. That's now, the net effect. Let me uh, try to understand that. So the brain is compressing? Yes. How so? How is the brain compressing? The brain has a covering around it called meninges. It just means covering in Latin. And those coverings anchor to the skull and the, the beginning and end of the spinal cord at the, in the neck and in the sacrum, the tailbone. As it compresses, the brain is like a, a, a water balloon, if you will, and you're pulling on it. Mm -hmm. And so it starts to compress. Then what happens is the vertebra in the spine start to reshape and become arthritic, literally. Now, now, I like something you said there. I like about all that you said, but you use the word design. So we specifically were designed by God to walk a certain way, to sit a certain way, to have good posture, and all these things, when we don't do that, it affects our, um, our, our skeletal structure. Now, I, I wanna show a video real quick here mm -hmm. that's gonna give us some insight because it, they were talking about arthritis on the news. So let's take a okay. look at this video. 
Dr. Holly Phillips is with us. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, we all did it when we were younger, cracking our knuckles. Fact or fiction, does that cause arthritis? Well, cracking your knuckles, that's absolutely fiction. It does not cause arthritis. But, you know, if your mom told you not to do it, she was on to something. <laughs> Even though it doesn't cause arthritis, it damages the joints in other ways. It stretches out the tendons and the ligaments, and in really bad cases can decrease your grip strength. So mom was on to something when she said don't do it. How about wearing high heels? High heels, regretfully for many of us, mm -hmm. um, that is a fact. It does lead to arthritis. And what's interesting is two inches seems to be the critical break point. Heels higher than two inches cause something called medial loading, where you put more pressure on the inside of your knees. Mm -hmm. That degenerates the joint and leads <laughs> so to arthritis. This is a little bit more than two uh, yeah. inches. Isn't it? Just yeah. a tad, just a tad, maybe three times I, as I much. May have, I may have arthritis yeah. tomorrow after wearing these. Well, right. the higher the heel, the longer you wear it, too, that raises your risk. So you can wear those for five minutes. You're good. Yeah. Okay, good. What about weather? It certainly can exacerbate, I think, arthritis, but does it cause it? That, that's absolutely right. It's f fiction that it causes arthritis. The weather cannot trigger arthritis in somebody who doesn't already have it. But cold and damp conditions can really worsen arthritis pain for sufferers. It causes swelling of the tissues around the joint um, and then causes pain. And weight, does it affect arthritis? Weight is very much a fact. It very much affects arthritis. Mm -hmm. Now, over Weight and obesity are a top cause of osteoarthritis of the hips, of the spine, and of the knees. And just keep in mind, every pound that you gain feels like four pounds on your knees. So it can add up very, very quickly and really degenerate the joints. All right. Dr. Holly Phillips with some good information. Thank you. Wow. You know, Doc, it's interesting. When you, when you watch the news, they, they give you information, but there's not a lot of understanding there. No. You know, they talked about the the high heel shoes and they talked about um, the weather and how that affects and, and Lord knows I've, I've heard many of my relatives say, oh, it, it's going to rain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel it's about to rain because Arthur is acting up. Mm -hmm. That's what they say. So, but there's no understanding. Why does that happen? And, and then they also mention obesity. Let's take those three areas. And then I want to make sure that we cover before, maybe before we go and check in what people are saying on the street. Mm -hmm. We want to hear what we have to say here, mm -hmm. but we want to check what they have to say on the street. But I want to make sure that we hit, what about the high heels? What about the weather? What about the, um, the obesity? And then what about diet? Mm -hmm. So let's start with uh, high heels. Good. Here's the problem. When high heels are worn, it causes the calves to tighten and the back of the thighs, the hamstrings to tighten, causing the low back to round and the upper body to go forward. Also, it forces the tailbone to go at a higher angle than we're designed. Mm -hmm. So the body's trying to compensate for two things in opposite directions. Pulling against each other. Pulling against each other. So the muscles foreshorten, they tighten. And as a result, it causes compression on all the joints that are involved, especially in the spine. So I see this with many women that have worn high heels for a long time. Not only does it cause bunions, because it's forcing the feet down and the, yeah. the foot foreshortens and the toes start to cross and hammerhead toes start to form commonly, but it also starts creating problems in the neck and low back and the joints start to inflame because they're used in a way that they're not designed. Not designed that way. How long will it take for, for a woman who's wearing high heels to end up in the place where arthritis may set in? Is it 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? Well, it depends. It depends on the person's age, what they're eating, how high the heels are. Okay. For example, two-inch heel is what the body can usually accommodate at the upper limit. Mm -hmm. Three, four, five inches, it's a greater stress on the body. If a person is younger, they're more resilient. If they're more flexible, they're more of an athletic, athletic constitution, they can accommodate it more easily than someone who doesn't exercise, who doesn't stretch, someone who's older, someone who's overweight. These are the things that start becoming progressive issues. I see. So, all right, so that's high heels. So this is something that can lead, obviously, to arthritis. Now, yes. in that little news clip we saw, we saw also weather. Now, I have certainly heard, and I mentioned that, mm -hmm. that people say, you know, it's about to rain because off is acting up. What, what is it about weather? Yeah, I have many patients who are more accurate than the weather people. <laughs> and here's what happens. When a weather front comes in, the barometric yeah. pressure drops. That's what it brings that weather front in. When it drops, like at nighttime, the same kind of thing happens. Anything that's inflamed inflames even more. 
So the joint that's inflamed will express greater pain because it's swelling more than it was when the barometric pressure was higher. Okay. That's the issue with weather. For those who may not know what barometric pressure uh, is, what is that exactly? It's the pressure that we have around us in the, in the atmosphere? atmosphere. Okay. And it's going up and down depending on many different factors. And when it's time about to rain, the pressure is pushing down. It drops. It drops. Right. Okay. And that's what brings the weather front in. So as that happens, joints will inflame more than they were even prior to that. Well, Doc, who wants to be a, uh, you know, telling the weather with pain? That's the hard way. That's the hard way. Yeah. I'd rather just watch the news, right? No question. Now, in that news clip, speaking of news, they also mention obesity. Ah, uh, yes. That's kind of an easy one, right? It's an easy one. We're designed for a height and weight with an optimal range. Okay. When we exceed that range, our joints take the brunt of that because they have to carry more weight than they're supposed to. Okay, this is heavy. This is heavy. So you're telling me that genetically, our DNA is designed, there's that word again, designed to bear a certain load. When we exceed it, we are putting too much stress? Yes. Oh, boy. Oh We're boy. carrying a load more than our body is designed to carry. Now, no matter what type of clothing they make to, to fit and all that, you are bearing too much weight and you could have an arthritic condition. Example, put a backpack on and stuff it with 20 pounds of rocks and see what that feels like on your hips and knees at the end of the day. If a person puts on 20 pounds of weight, that's also being carried by the body. This is kind of what it's like for me when I'm going through the airport with all my bags. Exactly. Okay. Okay, now, but we're seeing as it relates to obesity and weight, mm -hmm. this is a lifestyle diet issue. This is sitting in front of the television. Yes. This is eating certain foods and not to mention the, the foods. And in a previous uh, broadcast, in a previous program, we talked about how milk is not doing a body good, but actually affecting the, the bones. Yeah. Yes? Yes. Talk about diet for just a, a few moments before we switch to another segment. Very simple. When we eat foods that are not designed for our physiology, the way our body's made, okay. we're designed to live in a garden. That's we, according to Genesis, right? Genesis, the Bible. first chapter. That's right. We're designed to live in a garden. That's how our body is made. Our physiology accommodates food from the garden. If we take things out of its original state and we alter them and then take them in, we pay the consequence. As an example, the garden does not have white sugar. Huh. It does not have white flour, biscuits, and white bread, or white rice, or white flour These pasta. These are all refined, right? They're refined. So they cause the body to become acid, and therefore they are pro-inflammatory. They actually trigger inflammation. Other foods, the flesh foods especially, meats, fish, fowl. Okay, hold, hold on a second. Uh -huh. I really want to talk about that. All right. But before we do that, I want us to see, because we're speaking about this, but I know someone at home is saying, wait a minute, you know, you guys are, have an unfair advantage. <laughs> what about what I have to say? So we're going to go with sickness. We're going to see what he's saying or what people are saying on the streets about okay. Uncle Arthur. Let's see what they have to say, and then we'll come back and we'll see maybe what the Word of God says mm -hmm. and what God who designed us, what he says that we should eat from the garden. Yes. Let's take a look. Now, there's somebody who I like to call a dear friend. Okay. His name is Arthur. Do you know Arthur? No. Arthritis. Yeah. Arthur Arthritis! Arthritis in your hands and your joints. Do you know anybody with arthritis? My mom. Your mom, does she enjoy it? No, she hates it. She's actually grouchy. She, grouchy? She gets on my nerves when it happens. You need to give her a pep talk. Tell her, Mama, Arthur is your friend. Is he really? He is your friend. You should say, Mama, how do I get me some arthritis? Oh, no, I yes. don't want that. Yes, you do. There's confusion on the street, and we're up. trying to clear it up. <laughs> you got a little arthritis? Yeah, a little something. How does that feel? It not feel good. It oh. not good at all. Oh, it's man, you're no insulting brainer. Arthur. He's in town. Yeah. He might hear you. He can leave town, man. I don't want no bump with that. Yeah, arthritis. Arthur, you call him Arthur or arthritis? Either or. Either or, so you know Arthur. Man, this, this guy knows Arthur. Cramping up, what do, you, what do you mean by that? 
It's all you try to make your hands, try to move your hands, it's all stiff. Oh no, that's just Arthur getting some exercise. You know, Arthur's in town this week. Oh, he is. I can, I can send him to your place. Free samples? It's free samples, you know, he can hook up your joints and make you feel just great. You know, some people don't like arthritis, but he, he's my friend. He's your guy. I'll introduce him to you, Mark. Sure. It'll be good. Back to you. Well, as we can see, people do love their sugar and all the different things mm -hmm. that are causing these inflammatory arthritic situations. Yeah. And you know, but here's my question. What can we tell people that will help them to, um, to realize that, that chronic pain and lifestyle diseases, it's, it's not a normal way of life. It's not yeah. something that you, you just say, oh, that's my, and claiming it as a, my diabetes or my arthritis in this case. You know, I'm thinking of a scripture doc that is in uh, Proverbs chapter 16 mm -hmm. and verse 24, it speaks of bones. It says, pleasant words are as a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Amen. So God wants us to have healthy bones. And you were, you were gonna tell us about some of the things that were in the Garden of Eden, the, the diet that God had for this design that he mm -hmm. fashioned and formed that is best. And when we don't use that, we have inflammation. Exactly. Talk to us about that. We're, as I mentioned earlier, we're designed to live in the garden and our bodies are designed to partake of the garden. You put a seed in the ground and it comes up as something edible. Have you ever tried planting a chicken? It does not come up. Okay. Or a cow. Okay. So hamburgers. Well, somebody would say that doesn't mean you're not supposed to eat it. It's not from the garden. So when we try to eat something apart from the garden or processed from the garden, like for example, um, white flour products, pasta, white flour pasta is an example, or sugar, white rice. Sugar, white sugar, white, white rice. White sugar, pastries, cakes, pies, all of these kinds of so things. So if I'm someone who has arthritis mm -hmm. and I'm calling it my uncle Arthur and I've got knee pain and joint pain in my elbow and back and all this, you're telling, what we're telling them is that if you're eating white refined sugar, now there are some sweeteners that they could use, but white refined sugar, white flour, mm -hmm. different meats, yes, yes, then I'm going to have an inflamed, painful life. Yes. Coffee, I call coffee nothing more than liquid sandpaper to the joints. Liquid sandpaper. Yes. Same thing with bad fats. Any fat that's been fried, it's now carcinogenic and inflammatory. Fried foods, carcinogenic, that means it can lead to cancer. Yes. And it is going to cause the bones, the joints to hurt. Yes, same with animal fats. Like what kind of animals are we talking about? Anything that breathes. Anything that had a mama or a face. You got it. If it's got four legs and fur, let it keep on walking. Because <laughs> it has an acid in it called arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid. It's, an, it's a fatty acid in the lean muscle mass, not the marble you cut away, mm -hmm. that causes inflammation. So even if I get, you know, a lot of times people say, well, get a leaner cut, cut away that, like white meat. Right. You get the, the what is it, the, uh, the, is it the, uh, the breast of the chicken, right? White meat, so, so this is less fat, but you're saying that it's in the, even in the muscle yes. of the chicken. Even in eggs. It's in eggs. Yes, even in dairy, like cheeses and milk and yogurt and ice cream is found in all of that also that triggers inflammation. Another issue is all of the artificial foods, artificial sweeteners, artificial flavors and colors and dyes. They not only cause inflammation of joints, they cause inflammation of the brain. MSG, another one, or other what are called free glutamates. Yeah. It's a class of chemicals that causes brain inflammation, like nutritional yeast, for example. So these are things that are in people's diets. All your oils, heavy oils, especially what I call the industrial oils, corn, cottonseed, soy, canola. And especially when you're frying them. I oh. tell you, we could go on and on and on, but yes. I tell you, we, we, have, we, we have to do another program and deal with some more of these issues because this isn't enough time to really share with all the things that people are having to deal with with these lifestyle issues. Okay, so we have to wrap it up. You know, here's the point. You want to make sure that as our good doctor has shared with us, you need to be eating foods that 
come close to the hand of God or have come from the hand of God, as we like to say. Mm -hmm. We're talking about your fresh fruits and vegetables. We don't eat enough of those. We need to do more of that. And how about water? Drinking more water. You need fluid in the joints to actually make sure that you're not having an inflamed situation. So a lot of us are preferring to drink sodas instead of drinking water. So the things that God has provided, these are the things that are going to actually keep us healthy. Now, until next time, we'll see you again here on From Sickness to Health. Now, here is my admonition to you. Stay healthy. It's good to know that we don't have to embrace illness as some close companion. Once we make healthier lifestyle changes, then we can truly embrace that friend who sticks closer than a brother, namely Jesus Christ, our friend and savior. You know, Rico, this program has taught me a lot about true friendship. Whoa, that is excellent. Are you serious? Yeah, that I have many friends like Arthur and frenemies like you. You know, let's be honest. People aren't gonna make the necessary lifestyle changes to get rid of Arthur. They treat Arthur like a friend. They give him what he wants. They feed him what he wants. Wow, I have to say that's, that's kind of deep. And think about if Arthur was a real person. He'd have 60 million friends in America alone. If he was on Facebook and Twitter and Foursquare, he'd be a popular guy. All right, okay, okay, I get your point. But listen, arthritis is a lifestyle disease that can be controlled and even reversed. You know, as seekers of truth and people desiring to be healthier, we can do much better. We don't have to have these lifestyle diseases. Let's do what is practical and simple. Let's heed the word. That's our program for today. I'm Rico Hill. And I'm your friend, the blue guy. Friend? Fine, whatever. Frenemy! And as always, I like to end with 3 John 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. Maranatha. Look, man, you can Arthur. Oh, my aching knee. <laughs> Arthur, you're not being very friendly right now. Whoa, my back. Oh, come on, man. Oh, my aching joint. Arthur, are you serious? Oh, it must be raining. It, it must be raining outside. That's why he's flaring up. Oh, can you leave us alone, please? Oh, oh, we have to talk some things through. Get out of here. Leave us alone. <laughs>